Uh, every year we do lots of research with the book for the cover, which is very important for us, but also with the insides. And one theme that came across in the UK and the US this year was the boys are quite fascinated by the decade, going from 09 to 10 for them is a big deal. In fact, I remember as a child myself in the 1970s, going from 1979 to 1980 was a huge deal for me. Um, same with our boys now. So we thought, why not use this as a theme th throughout the whole book? We can look back over the decade and review some of the most amazing record attempts. It has been a very dynamic decade. There's been lots of sadness. We began with the 9-11 bombings, absolutely terrible. We had the Bam earthquake, we've had the tsunami, we've had Hurricane Katrina. But then it's been balanced with some of the good news. We've had the first black American president with Barack Obama, fantastic news. We've uh, had the CERN Hadron Collider was turned on. It didn't mean we didn't work, but it was turned on the world's largest science project. Uh, we found three of the t world's biggest men and two of the world's smallest men. Like buses, they come along very, very uh, infrequently, and now here we are, we've got three of them. So it's been a very big decade for us, and we're very proud to present what we think is the book of the decade. Yeah, also in the book this year, we've put a lot of online content onto our website, which ties into the book's content. So we've picked out, for example, the top 100 record and record breakers of the decade. And they're all on our website with pointers from the book to the site where readers can go on and vote for the ones that are their favourites or that they think are the most significant. We've also put in a little bit across the bottom of each page, which lists every day of the year. And so you can look up your own birth date to see what kind of record has been uh, set or broken on that day. And um, there's, there's just a whole lot of stuff that actually makes it a really interactive book to work through. And kids who love reading the book with their parents will actually be able to sit there with the computer that feeds back all this behind the scenes information. So it's, it's not only just a great read, it's also a really, really good tool to sort of spend time with um, in terms of a, a whole family dynamic thing. The design feature this year, um, which is very strong throughout the book you'll see, is what we're calling steampunk. It's inspired by the graphic novel style, um, the likes of you'll see in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen um, or the Golden Compass movie. The idea is to take modern contemporary technology but place it in a kind of Victorian setting. So imagine an iPod that's powered by steam, for example. The idea of this is you're looking back over time, also looking forward. So the idea of looking back over the decade looking back over history, but also looking forward, is encapsulated in this kind of amazing design. Again, testing the design, it's p the kids love the idea of packing the spreads full of information. Um, the design is based on uh, helping kids read, so those who are reluctant readers may find it much easier to read our book than to read other books that are not so well designed. The really great thing about Guinness World Records is that we have about 50,000 records in our database, and yet only about 4,000 records make it into the book each year. If we put them all in, the book would be huge. So um, at least 85% of the records are new in every single edition, and I think a lot of people don't realise that. There are about 15% of records that are what we call core records, the youngest, the oldest, the tallest, the shortest, etc., that the readers sort of expect. But because we have this incredible resource of records available to us, we can create most of the book renewed every year. So we can choose particular themes or particular spreads or subjects that we want to feature in the book, and we can pull records from our database to suit that. Additionally, we get about a thousand record claims per week, um, many of which are knocked back for just being silly or extreme or uninteresting. But there is always new material coming in through claims and also we have a team of about 15 adjudicators who attend new record attempts all over the world every day of the year. We actually have more adjudications to do than we have staff available to do them. Um, and we have more records coming in than we can ever fit into each new edition of the book. So Guinness World Records will always be a new book every year in the vast, vast majority of its content, and, and that's fantastic. One of the most exciting aspects of this year's book for me is that we have gone in, around the world to find the world's tallest people. And there's great contention as to who is the tallest man, the tallest woman. But this year we wanted to find out for sure, being it is the book of the decade, we had to be very sure. So I personally travelled from Thailand to Turkey to the USA, to try and find at least the key record holders. We now can guarantee, and I have measured the world's tallest man, the world's tallest children, the world's tallest married couple. So for us, this is the tallest book this year. It's a very important record category, and we're very proud to present all our key record holders this year. As editor-in-chief, I've had a really fun, enjoyable year putting together this book. 
Uh, it's certainly the most collectible book we've ever produced, and I'm confident it will sell out fast. So grab your copy now while you can.